Hey, what's up? Scott Hawksworth at RecordingExcellence.com here. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the best and worst mixing advice ever. Now, that might seem kind of hyperbolic because, well, there's just a lot of mixing advice out there, and certainly there's a lot that could be considered the best and the worst. But really, I wanted to cover two pieces of advice that I see experienced mixing engineers giving out time and time again. And I wanted to cover what's great and what makes it among the best advice you can get, and what's not so great and what makes it among some of the worst advice you can get. So the first piece of advice that I see thrown around a lot in mixing is use your ears. Now, this is sometimes delivered with a bit of snark because, well, it should be pretty obvious in mixing, use your ears. But for the benefit of, uh, of everybody, I do think it is among the best advice you can get because yes, Mixing is all about how you listen and make adjustments to your mix. Use your ears is a really important tip and thing to keep in mind. We get so wrapped up in tips, tricks, or some secret way to mix a song, you know, some secret technique that we can lose sight of the most important thing, which is, hey, develop those critical listening skills and really listen to your, your mix. Listen to how those instruments sound. Listen to the vocal. And so use your ears is very helpful in that sense, you know. When you treat your space, work on, hey, how does, how does it sound? How does your space sound? How do those frequencies reflect all across your room? And how does that affect how you mix? Yes, use your ears. Don't worry so much about having the perfect plug-in or spending all this money on the perfect microphone. Use your ears. So that's where it's, it's one of the best tips you can get because that's at the heart of it. Mixing is all about listening and your ears are your tools that help you listen. Now, why do I think it's also among the worst pieces of mixing advice you can give? Well, unfortunately, there's a couple reasons. One, your ears lie to you from time to time. This is just a fact. When you have been listening to the same song for hours on end and you're mixing the same song and making these tweaks, your ears can start to get used to imperfections in that mix and will just tune them out. So whereas you're thinking your mix is sounding perfect, a third party listener might hear something that is completely horrible that you're just missing completely because your ears are lying to you and you're used to it. I also think it's unhelpful because here's the facts. If you're not experienced and have been mixing for 15, 20 years, you, your ears will not have been developed to the point where you can critically listen in the same way that a mixing engineer who has been doing this for multiple decades can. You just can't pick out the frequencies and subtleties of a mix that someone who is super experienced can. I know that's something I'm still working on, still working on my ability to listen to music critically and really hear frequencies and hear problems and make, and make adjustments on the fly. So use your ears. Well, how does that help someone who hasn't developed those ears, who, who doesn't know what they're supposed to be listening for? So. That's why use your ears, I think, is among the best and worst pieces of advice you can get. The second piece of advice that I see thrown around a lot, and it's really just an answer that mixing engineers give when they're asked a question, how do you get this kind of sound, or how did you achieve this in this specific mix? And the answer is, it depends. Now, this is a great and, and really among the best pieces of advice because it, it exposes a truth to mixing. And, and, and the truth is, is that mixing is an art form. It is not something that it's paint by numbers and okay, if I follow this, 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 and this, it's gonna work every time on every mix, no matter the genre, and it's gonna sound great. Uh, maybe some of us, uh, myself included, would wish that that was the case with mixing, but really mixing is an art form and that's what makes it so great is that there are many, many ways to 
achieve great sound in a number of mixes and you can go about it all in, in completely different paths. So that's where it depends makes sense because if someone says, well, how did you, how do I get great reverb out of or a great reverb sound out of this vocal? Well, it depends what's going on in the mix. What, what other, what other plugins are you running? You know, what, what, what's your, uh, what's your setup? These are all things that, okay, yes, it depends on. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're mixing that, yes, it depends. Now, why is this one among the worst pieces of advice you can give? Well, it's not really helpful if you're just starting out mixing or trying to improve to have someone say, well, it depends. A lot of us, myself included, get better by observing those who have more experience and who are, quite frankly, better mixers and observing what they do and learning about, okay, what was your process for getting this specific sound out of this specific track? Because then I can take that process and either apply it to my own mixes with tweaks, obviously, because it's never going to work the exact same way and then grow from there and then expand out of it and develop my own system, my own workflow. So saying just it depends and throwing up your hands, well, okay, it depends, fair enough. Show me what you did anyway. Show me how you might approach it. Give me an example. Then I can learn from that and take that to heart. That's one of the things with mixing that I think is too often overlooked. So these were really just two pieces of advice that I see thrown around a lot from experienced mixing engineers. And sometimes it's thrown around with a little bit of snark. And that does bother me because I think, while they are good pieces of advice. They're also not helpful to, to those of us who are trying to get better. I know it's something when I first started out and I was looking for tips and advice and guidance, having someone say, mm, use your ears. Well, that's kind of, I don't know, a bit elitist when you just dismissively say, use your ears, you can get better at mixing. No matter what skill level you are, you have, no matter what kind of home studio setup you have, I believe you can get better and you can make better music and make better sounding music when you record it. So don't take these pieces of advice completely to heart. Take them with a grain of salt. Take the parts that are good the good, uh, the good pieces out of it. So yes, use your ears. Don't just, <laughs> you know, listen. But the bad parts of it, throw that aside. Don't feel as though that there's some mysterious mixing knowledge that you'll just never get, um, which I think some of these, these pieces of advice kind of tend to, to uh, propagate. So that's my video for today. Uh, Thanks so much for subscribing and uh, yeah, make some great music.